Colin, I did a doctorate in, in neuroscience and then went on to do other things, but I've never, uh, I've never left the, uh, the hunger and the fascination about the nature of consciousness. And the, the fundamental question is, is it, is it entirely physical? We certainly know that the brain is absolutely necessary for consciousness, and nobody doubts that, well, nobody, I think, today would. Uh, the question is, is it sufficient? Is, is the brain alone? And frankly, uh, I've talked to a lot of really smart people who you and I probably both know, uh, philosophers, uh, theologians, uh, scientists uh, in, in the physical science, and sometimes in the computational sciences, and, and, uh, uh, and, and even a few in neuroscience, who would doubt that, who would say that y you can't go all the way with the physical brain to explain the first person uh, nature, the subjectiveness of consciousness, the inner feeling. Yeah, I'm going to cop out of the question in a way by saying that you know I, I think we have to we have to ask and answer questions about what we mean by the word before we can start to address questions about where it comes from. I mean, we could be having the same discussion in the 17th century about phlogiston. Now, Flosha, this is the theory yeah, yeah, yeah. dominant in chemistry to explain oxidation and burning and so on. That complete nonsense. But we could have been having an erudite discussion. I mean, do you think that um, phlogiston is entirely generated by physical forces or is there something uh, magical to it? We could have had a long erudite discussion and it would have been utterly meaningless. And I suspect that our understanding of what we mean by this magical word consciousness. It's about the same level uh, do, do, as, do the, really? as, as the meaning of the word phlogiston because was consciousness... then. And it, and it might equally you know, not represent something that deserves a discussion about where it comes from because it doesn't, it sort of, it doesn't exist in the form that we use the word to represent. But you have an inner feeling of what it feels like to be sitting at this table, mm -hmm. to be talking, to be thrown questions at and having to answer and worry if you're late for something. I mean, you have a feeling of, 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 of what that's like. Mm. Uh, and uh, you could be going through these same behaviors and not have that in, in, inner feeling. A computer does things very much better than I can in many respects, but it, it mm -hmm. has no inner feelings. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly our computers don't today. I mean, so that's what we're talking about. Put everything else aside, but that, that inner subjectivity, is that a further fact about reality that cannot be explained by the brain alone? That's, that's the core. That's a question that, to me, makes sense. You, you may not have an answer. You may not like the answer, uh, if there is an answer, but it, it's a question that makes sense. Yeah. Well, I, I would take um, an empirical view and just um, say, you know, uh, Let's set aside for the moment those phenomena that cannot be um, conventionally addressed and see how much explanation we can provide for the, for the things that we believe that that phenomenon plays a part in by other mechanisms. So, you know, I think you can get a long way with the... You um, certainly can. ...with uh, no, I mean, purely no. mechanistic explanations of how brains work without having to resort to the hypothesis that the subjectivity of the experience of having a brain and owning yeah, a brain and yeah. using it itself plays a part in the action of the brain. Comes from somewhere well, else, maybe. Generated it, magically. Even, exactly. even if it doesn't, there's a two, two separate, let's, set, let's mm. tease them apart. The, the, the fact that they, they play a part or that they exist. I mean, they can exist and not play a part. Mm. But the fact that it exists and you feel it is something that has to be explained. Yeah, so we have the kinds of brains that produce the report of having subjective experiences. Yes, yes. yes. We, and, and, and uh, we think they do something. Mm -hmm. They may not. That's possible. I mean, it may be the illusory feeling that they have impact. Mm -hmm. But at the very least, they, I, I think they have impact. And therefore, that I, the, the phrase, I think they have impact, that's the real part. Mm -hmm. uh, I, yeah, no, I'm not, you know, I don't think that I don't value my conscious experiences. I mean, life would, I think, mean nothing to me if I didn't have them. By definition. Um, by, by definition. Um, but, uh, you know, in the same way that, you know, the way that I see the physical world doesn't necessarily represent the reality of the physical world. Okay. You know, I see the sun rising right, right. from the horizon. I know right. perfectly well this is just due to the right. rotation of the Earth on its axis. So, I don't just look back from phenomena and, um, and uh, imagine 
providing explanations for them other than the ones that come intuitively. Mm. The intuitive feeling about consciousness is that A, it's terribly, terribly important. B, it's doing things. It is the medium by which you decide what to do with your life, that you interact with the world around you and so on. But, you know, there's so much evidence that our interpretation of what's going on at the level of subjectivity um, is only a tiny fraction of the reality of what our brains Certainly. are doing to understand the world, to process it subconsciously, to make decisions about our, our actions. So this account that we get through subjective experience is a very, very odd version yeah, I, I, of what our brains But that's the point. But that's the point. It is so odd. Mm. And, and isn't something so odd uh, demanding some kind of an odd explanation? Yes. I mean, you're, you're, it's, it's within, it's on the checklist <laughs> of things that neuroscientists have to to yeah. eventually to try to right. explain. But you know, if and um, some say that will be impossible. And, and, and they come at it from very different yep. angles. Some philosophers say it's fundamentally impossible. Others would say we don't have the capacity to do that. Others, some, some would say that therefore consciousness is some irreducible force, fundamental force in the universe. And the, the, these are not people who have any no, theological no. Uh, uh, no, interest. No, but the fact that very clever people can come to entirely different views about a phenomenon is a, is a reflection on our, the, our ignorance about Maybe. the nature of the phenomenon itself. Right, right, and I right, just right. don't think we're at the stage really to be able to, to, to um, describe what it is that we want to explain. Um, you know, it's, it's, but but what, what would count as a possible explanation? You well, okay, I'm going to tell you, right? I, I, I think that you know, consciousness is generated by brains and nothing else. I mean, that's a starting position. And, and of course, I could be challenged on, on that, and one has to be open to challenge. My, my, my position is kind of uh, as absolutist as anybody is in, in an area where, we, where, yeah, like we, where there is so much ignorance. So I think that um, consciousness, whatever they are, are a product of brain processes and are integral to the way in which brains are working, but are, in a sense, an epiphenomenon in that they are not, the state of being conscious and aware is not causally involved in the action of the brain that's generating but, it. This is a statement of belief rather than knowledge. <laughs> and, and, and I accept that, and, but I would say is that even if you are right, mm. that still doesn't oh, account it for, for what it is. Absolutely. And yeah. how, you, how you have neuronal spikes, impulses of electricity mm. become that feeling. I mean, that's the real challenge. Yes, uh, and, and the, the, that is a very interesting challenge, but of course it would be a lot more interesting if one believed that through the generation of subjective states, uh, those sub subjective states became part yes, of the mechanism yes, through yes, which yes. brains It would be more act. important. Um, it would be more important, and I'm not. And many people believe that, that, and 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 you and you would yes, say yes. that's a that's a further question that yes, yeah. that may not have a, uh, a a positive answer. Yeah. So I would say let, let's take a two pronged approach. Let's see how far we can get in explaining how brains work without mm -hmm. resorting to. Mm -hmm involving consciousness as a causal yes. force. And then secondly, look at this curious phenomenon, try to firm it up and define it more exactly so that we can look at it experimentally. In simple situations at least, saying, well, how do variations in conscious experience mm. correlate with variations in neuronal activity? Mm. That'll be a first step. Doesn't prove the relationship it begins to establish. Cause, yeah. Exactly, yeah. some yeah. kind of neural correlative consciousness, as Francis Crick would, would, mm -hmm. uh, would call it, instead of getting on the way towards an account mm -hmm. of the relationship between neural activity and subjective states. So, I mean, you know, this is philosophically a very simplistic approach, but I think, you know, it's a hard-nosed one because we have to try and make progress in understanding how brains um, mm -hmm. work. Uh, if we're saying, gosh, a fundamental part of how brains work is this thing, is this property, which we don't even have the beginning of any understanding of, we might as well pack our bags and go home as neuroscientists. Mm -hmm. So I think we you know, start with a mechanistic approach, see if we can explain in terms of chemicals and impulses and nerves and connections and so on. And, and by the way, this, sorts of, this is also the kind of machine that happens to generate consciousness on the way. Isn't that an interesting little phenomenon? Mm -hmm. That's, that's, I'm afraid, there's a naive approach that I would take to the, to the problem. Probably wrong, you know, in the fullness of time, we'll, we'll see that it's a major force in the, in the universe that requires a different sort of physics and is absolutely dominant in the way that our brains work, maybe. Yeah, but you don't think so. <laughs>